Well, we in the home stretch on a muscle truck shootout, and you know what that means. That means you're about to be disappointed by your Ford. Not likely. You do know that style can win over substance, right? Very funny. Well, we've added a whole lot of high performance upgrades to both of these muscle trucks, but I haven't heard this little mouse trap run yet, so why don't you hit it? Time for it. It's louder than before. <laughs> you got earplugs. Oh. Yeah, I, I don't know about muscle truck there, buddy, but uh, it's it's loud. I mean, it's more muscly than it was before. Is it though? It's a V6, man, work with what we got. But I did have to wrap up a few little things and that's feeding this bad dude some fuel. The stock fuel pump will support a thousand horsepower as long as it has the voltage to do it. So JMS chip sent over a fuel max, which basically boosts that stock fuel pump, feeds those injectors all the fuel they need. Now pair that with the pedal max, that'll increase the throttle response and just make this truck fun to drive. Now, I'm no genius, but you're not getting anywhere near a thousand horsepower. I can guarantee you that. Not close, but hey, at least we know it can support it, right? All right, well, today we're talking about appearance. We've done all the mechanical upgrades to both of these rigs, so it's time to make them look better. And on that note, I've actually got to skip town. I'm going down to the powder coater because I got some parts for the SRT that are just finished up. Sweet, my wheels are here, already mounted up. I just got to see if they actually fit and what I'm gonna need to trim. All right, catch you back in a minute. Later. I'm gonna go ahead and say this is one mighty fine little combo I selected here. We got these black wheels with some slight machine work and it's just gonna complement the truck really well. Now these are some 22 by 12 drop stars. Picked them up from Summit Racing, they sent them on over and we got them wrapped in some 30540 or 22 General Grabber UHPs. Now the one thing, we're gonna have an equalizing factor between me and old Lawrence. That's these tires. We're both gonna be rocking the exact same tire and the exact same size. Gotta make things fair, you know? Can't give them too much of a head start. But the unique factor about these wheels is I ordered a negative 44 offset. And what that means is that the wheel is gonna kick out 44 millimeters off the of center, which, if you know anything about it, it's gonna do two things. Push it further to the front when you turn, and as you can see, we're gonna have some rubbing issues. Then, when you crank that wheel the other way, you have the same problem in the back. Now, yeah, you could set up and start doing some crazy measurements and figure all this out. Or you could just take a very well-educated guess like myself, get a little lucky, and just realize you have to cut some things. But I'm okay with that, so let's get to it. <laughs> Every truck's gonna be a little bit different when it comes to trimming. And you don't wanna really cut more than you need to, so you just take it slow, a little bit at a time, and figure it out. Finally get to bolt this tire and wheel up for good. Put this dude on the ground, make sure we got the clearance. I can crank this dude up. See uh, if it rubs. You sure this thing isn't misfiring? Don't worry about that. It sounds kinda of hard all the way. Keep going. Keep going. That's it. Money. Ton of room. Gets really close in the back, but doesn't Sorry, I couldn't rub, hear you so. over those motorcycles driving by. What was that? <laughs> Gets really close in the back, but doesn't rub. I think we good. All right, well, that was way too much effort to put a wheel and tire on, but uh, I'm going to show you how easy it can be. Yeah. So instead of running an aftermarket wheel that's way too wide and sticks out so much it makes the truck look like it belongs in a Luke Bryan country music video, I decided to keep things a little bit classier and go with a stock SRT10 Ram wheel. Now these are a 22 by 10, so there's no need to go any wider, but I got these powder coated a dark gunmetal charcoal by the guys at Blast from the Past in Lebanon, Tennessee. Now Austin did mention that we're gonna be running the same tire, and these are a 305 
4022, and they're a General Grabber UHP. Now, this is an ultra high performance light truck and SUV tire, which is going to give both of these trucks great traction and great handling when we're out on the street or even when we do go back to the track. But for now, all I've got to do is get these bolted up. And I know they're going to fit without any sawzall work. Oh, that's heavy. Next, the goods go on. Well, it's definitely no mystery where uh, most of my parts budget was spent. <laughs> well, this is kind of cool because it actually shows, you know, different personalities. It shows what your priorities are and uh, what mine are not. Well, I, I'm still making it go faster and more power. It's just style and appearance is a big thing, too. You got to have it all, man. Well, uh, walk us through what you got. Yeah, I'm going to go ahead and say Summit Racing hooked it up with a package deal on this one. We're going to be rocking a fiberglass hood with some Ram air induction. Feed those turbos, let them breathe some blacked out headlights, LED, and uh, change it up a little bit with a Raptor style grill. And finally, this was kind of a last minute thought, but throwing some flares on it, I think it'll clean it up and give it the stance I want. Well, I am taking a little bit more subtle approach in the visual makeover of the SRT Ram. Basically, I've got two items. I've got a black grill insert, and I've got a pair of headlights that have some kind of black in the background. All I'm really trying to accomplish here is get rid of a lot of that chrome, kind of bring the truck into the 21st century. But uh, <laughs> you are the simplest dude I've ever met. Yeah, who's going to be winning? There we go. Basically, what we got going on is there's these two retaining clips that press into these retainers. And it actually sounds like something's breaking, but it's not. Now, it is a fairly subtle difference, but having the background of the reflector blacked out, I think, makes this truck look a whole lot better. I told you I can't throw. A Ram SRT10 is quite different on the front end from a base model Ram. And two parts that really make it stand out are the Ram Air hood and the front bumper. And they both have a black mesh grill over the air scoop. But for some reason, the front of the hood got these horizontal chrome slats, and it just doesn't really tie together all that well. Now, we get a lot of our parts from Summit Racing, and they have a lot of aftermarket grills which are pretty flashy, but I didn't want that. So instead, this is something you might not think that Summit carries. I picked up a bone stock replacement grill from a base model Ram. It's made from black plastic. They cost about 12 bucks a piece, so it's not gonna hurt my budget all that much. And it's gonna perfectly tie together the front end of this Ram. But first, I've gotta unbolt the front of the hood so I can get it in. So to zip off the fasteners under this hood, I'm gonna be using this Matco Tools quarter drive 12 volt cordless impact. Now it's compact size makes it great for working under the hood of a vehicle because it gets into a lot of those harder to reach places where a full size impact gun just won't reach. It has a comfortable and ergonomic design in a variable speed trigger, which means it's precise to use. Plus it has a built in LED light to illuminate some of those harder to see areas. Not only that, this thing has 60 pounds of breakaway torque, which means it's one of the more powerful compact tools ever designed. The original grill is held into the shell with these two-part plastic clips. The inner part, or pin, simply pushes through the back side of the clip, and the outer part will just pop right out. Now, I don't know about you guys, but to me, this $12 per side definitely improves the front end of this truck because this whole 90s billet thing going on, it just doesn't work anymore. So we've got black, it completes the theme on the front end of the truck, and for $24 grand total, I mean, you just can't get any better than that. And it only took me like 10 minutes, and I think Austin's still out there in the paint booth sanding for probably like the 12th hour in a row. Already got all the other parts painted on the truck, and instead of going with the normal body color and color matching everything like I normally would, taking a little chance here, I'm going with gloss black. Now I think it'll look pretty cool once everything's thrown together and it'll accent it pretty nice, 
and I figured why not throw it on this hood. We got some good body lines here. I'm sure I could find some places, throw some gloss black on here along with that body color. It'll look pretty cool. And uh, well, cleanliness is happiness, so we're ready to spray. Next, blacken emblems without using paint. Back at it on the F-150. And I keep reminding old LT that the muscle trucks build off is not just about performance, it's also about style. We're finishing up here in the booth, laying down some paint, and we'll completely transform the entire look of this truck. And that color matched gray metallic should match the Ford perfectly. Well, I think that's gonna win the style competition right there for $24. I will admit that I am taking a pretty minimalist approach when it comes to doing a visual makeover to this truck because pretty much the stuff that I care about makes the truck go faster. However, there is one more thing that I wanna change on the appearance of this truck, and that's right here on the door. Now, a popular modification is to debadge, which is basically where you peel these letters off, scrape off the adhesive, and buff the door to make it look like they were never there in the first place. But I don't really want to take away from the heritage of the SRT10, and I kind of like the way that the logo looks, except that it's chrome, and I'd much prefer it to be black. Now, I'm going to try a technique that I haven't used before, so we're in this together to find out if it's going to work. Like any paintwork, the job begins by cleaning the surface, but that's where the similarities end. Because I'm using a peelable vinyl coating, I don't have to mask each individual letter. Rather, I'm just leaving a large rectangle exposed around the whole thing. According to the instructions, you're supposed to hit it with a light coat at first, and then several heavier coats. And the more you apply, the easier it should be to peel off later on. Well, I think it is fairly obvious that we have no shortage of parts here, spent a lot of time prepping and a tiny bit of time painting, and got all this stuff done in nice gloss black. And if you ask me, I think it'll look pretty darn good on this charcoal gray truck. Once it's all blacked out, it's going to contrast really well. After all, this is the muscle truck's build off. Styling and appearance is equal value in points to performance. I'm not saying who's going to win, I'm just saying I may have the upper hand here. I mean, we got this Raptor style grill gloss black, the bumper black all the way down in the middle, and wrapping it up with these flares. It's going to look pretty cool. Might as well get started by slapping on that old bumper. After popping just a few pieces off, we're gonna swap out this factory doll looking grill. It's easily done by just swapping the inner support over to the new grill, and boom, transformation, baby. And now we finally starting to see it come together, the overall look and stance of this truck. Now, if you remember, we put these 22 inch by 12 inch wide wheels on here with a negative 44 offset. What that did was stick that rubber way past the body line. These factory little skinny flares, well, they're not going to do anything. And personally, that's a little too much meat sticking out from my likings. Now, if it was off-road or lifted, it would look cool, I'd agree. But with this road tire and the stance we're going for and the muscle truck effect, I'm voting for fender flares. And I'm not even a fender flare kind of guy, but in this application, I think it'll look pretty cool. And you just might be surprised. Well, a nice new shiny emblem means that the build must be about complete, but not even close. I still have a thing or two I want to do to this truck and really dial it in and tidy it up. After all, we still got to get the hood, slap that on, get it outside and see what it actually looks like. And uh, I'm not really sure what this fella been up to, but it just proves that anybody could paint anything. After laying down three good coats and following up with a flow coat to let that metallic stand up, we have a good foundation with our first base coat sprayed. When spraying two tones or multiple colors, I would normally spray that accent color first, then mask off and spray that body color for the main base coat. But on this hood and where I choose to put this tape line, it's actually going to be way easier for me to spray that base color first and then use that tape line because we got some weird contours here 
and spray our accent color later, we'll be in business. Quick and easy. After we get our main color taped off, it's time to lay down about three coats with this accent color. Then we're gonna follow that up with four nice medium wet coats of clear to get this little dude shiny. So who really needs a paint booth and a whole bunch of expensive equipment? For me, a roll of masking tape and a spray bomb is all it takes. Next, did we spend our entire budgets? Find out. We've been out of the booth for a minute and I went ahead and block sanded this whole hood down. Now it's just time to polish it out and find that shine. Using a simple two-step process, I started with the Sonax Profiline Ultimate Cut. Then followed it up with the perfect finish and a soft pad to finally hone in that shine. We use many different Sonax products here in the shop to keep our trucks looking great. Everything from their wheel cleaner, glass cleaner, and even their spray detailer. But they also offer a wide range of products for paint correction as well, like the Profiline EX0406. Now, let's say you've got a truck kind of like the SRT10 here. It's a few years old and it's spent a lot of time in the sun. It doesn't take more than a quick glance to realize this paint doesn't look great. Now, you can use paint correction techniques to kind of restore some of the shine and color to an older paint job, but there is such a thing as too far gone. Now, the sides of this truck, they do look pretty good because they don't get direct sunlight. However, the horizontal surfaces like the hood and a lot of the roof, well, there's not a lot that we can do. If you kind of look here on the edge, you see a lot of these little tiny pits or bubbles. Basically, the clear coat is just starting to separate from the base coat underneath. Now, if you left this thing outside for another couple of years, eventually, all the clear coat would basically fall off and turn to dust, and you'd start to see some rust kind of build up underneath here. So really, the only thing that we can do to the top of this truck is repaint, but that's a project for another day. And the hard work pays off. I am truly satisfied with how this hood came out. The clear coat's nice and flat, shining nice and bright, and you can see that gloss and the color truly stand out. But that'll protect the paint. You also want to protect that clear coat, and to do that, we're going to use the Sonax Profiline Polymer Net Shield. Now, unlike a wax that contains oils, this is a polymer-based product. It's a sealant, meaning it'll still have that drip-off effect, still protect the clear coat, it lasts up to six months, and super easy to apply. Really can't go wrong. Just spray it directly on the sponge or on the paint surface, rub it in, and all you gotta do is wipe it off before it's dry. And to extend the life of the sealant, you can use the Brilliant Shine Detailer every six to eight car washes, and it'll put it up there somewhere good to about a year. Make that gloss keep shining and that color keep popping. Well, that pretty much wraps up my build, and it looks like your hood is shiny again, so that's progress, right? Your timing is impeccable, my friend. Wraps up mine, too. Grab that in, and let's get this dude on there, huh? You know, I like the black on this. It kind of gives it like a Shelby vibe. I figured I'd do something a little different instead of just plain Jane. Now, you test this before, right? You know it's going to fit? Yeah. It's line up the first time? It's not going to be easy, but it will. I said we'd take them outside so we could actually see what they look like. All right, see if you can keep up. So this wraps up the build portion of our muscle truck shootout. And I've got to say, it feels good to get these things out of the shop and into the sunlight so we can finally just take a step back and look at what we created. For sure, it's always fun to build them, but in my opinion, it's more fun once the build's complete and you can actually see what you accomplished. And I think they're pretty cool. And I'm not gonna lie, I even kinda dig your black emblems. You know what, that's a nice DIY custom touch. And it just illustrates the difference between how these two trucks are built. You've got one over here that's just kinda all about flash and pizzazz, and then you've got one over here which is all business and muscle. Well, it's all about the dollar, so go ahead and tell me what you spent so far. All right, so we each were given 15 grand to start this build off. And up until this point, I had $6,149 left. 
the majority of my budget today was spent on the wheels and tires. It cost me 500 bucks to get the wheels powder coated, 815 for the tires, and 199 for the headlights and grill, which means today I spent $1,514 and I've got 4635 left in the bank. On the F-150, I previously spent $9,200. Today, on tires alone, I spent 815 bucks, the wheels were 1500 and body mods was $3,100. In total, that's $14,600. That leaves me with just under 400 left in the bank. The next time you see these two trucks, they're gonna be put to the test on the track and there's only gonna be one winner. So until then, we're gonna protect them with these WeatherShield HP truck covers from Covercraft. They're made with a high performance all weather fabric, which means you can use them both indoors and out. It allow water to bead off, but the fabric still breathes so you don't have moisture build up underneath. Plus, they're a perfect fit. If you have any questions about Covercraft or anything else you've seen in the show today, be sure to check us out at PowerNationTV.com.